<laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. And start with our language lesson. If you don't mind, um, please mute your devices or my uh, teachers. If you would like to stay unmuted and you can just jump in whenever you would like, I would appreciate that. Um, I do want to, like I always like to go over what we did last week. We did actually cover punctuation marks on last week. And what we did, we looked at the end punctuation marks of the period, the question mark, and the exclamation mark for all kinds of sentences. We looked at commas and all uses of commas, which could be for compound and complex sentences, commas in a series, introductory words such as yes, no, or well. Um, you can use commas in dates. You can also use commas in direct address. Um, and I gave an example, max, comma, and also quotation marks. Then we use the punctuation marks of quotation marks. You use those with dialogue and apostrophes when you're showing possess possessives or and then abbreviations. Um, I have an example there of doctor and you have the abbreviation, the capital D, R, and a period. So my end punctuation marks, commas, quotation marks, apostrophes, and abbreviations. So we looked at our punctuation marks last week and I did want to um, tell you guys that I am going to go back and do just a brief lesson on commas, but I'm not going to do that today. I do want to touch on parts of speech today, but I will go back because I would like to actually um, hit on commas a little bit more, but I wanted to touch on parts of speech today. Now, when we're looking at parts of speech, um, we know that there are eight parts of speech. We have nouns, which nouns are person, place, thing, or idea. And I gave an example, Jack, Pen, love. So person, place, thing, or idea. An adjective, adjectives describe nouns. And we have some um, examples there, red and pretty. We also have verbs, my parts of speech, verbs. You have verbs, so just action words, but they're also linking because they can connect the subject with the predicate. And I have some action words of rushes, jumps, um, and, and linking verbs is have. Adverbs. My adverbs, they just describe noun, I mean verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. And the good thing about adverbs is usually they end in L-Y. Um, and my example here is happily. And pronouns. Pronouns re renames the noun. You have he, she, or they. Prepositions. Prepositions link nouns with other words in the sentence. They usually show relationship or they'll show location. For instance, under or above, like um, my water bottle is on the table, under the table, above the sink. So they just show relationships or location. Conjunctions, they connect words in a sentence. And we know with conjunctions, we have our um, famous fanboys um, and or um, we have subordinating conjunctions, we have correlative, um, of the correlating conjunctions and subordinating, correlating, and what's the other one, Miss Anderson? The three types of... Say it again, Miss Dowdy. The other type of conjunctions, because I looked at um, subordinating, um, correlative, is it correlative? Coordinate, coordinating. Coordinating. That's the word I was. I couldn't think of. Yes, ma'am. So we looked at different types of conjunctions as well. Um, but we know they connect words in a sentence and interjections. These are words that express emotion or strong feelings. Those are my favorite parts of speech. Okay. So, um, that's what we're going to talk about today, guys, our eight parts of speech. Now, this is something that we did toward the beginning of the school year, but we're actually going to review because, you know, um, with language, it's just spiral. Also, you will see that the four brain pop videos that you're going to watch this week, you're going to do the videos and the quizzes, they will be all parts of speech, okay? And that's why I didn't want to go into commas because um, there were only just one, there was one video that I saw that was related to commas. So we'll go back and add commas in a couple of weeks. So we're going to look at parts of speech this week. Okay. Now, 
My YouTube channel name, just going to throw it out there. Someone just asked, is Miss Dot Dowdy. Please subscribe. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, guys. And I would like to go over a slide share. Are you guys able to see the slide share? Yes. Okay, excellent. See if I make it bigger. All right, we're gonna look at the eight parts of speech. Our eight parts of speech are interjections, nouns, verbs, pronouns, adverbs, prepositions, adjectives, and conjunctions. A noun names, person, place, thing, or idea. We have common nouns, which man, woman. We have proper nouns, which name specific um, things, John, Mary. We have singular, which is just one, man, woman. We have plural, men and women. We have singular possessive nouns, which they show, show possession, man, and with possessive, you actually, and that's a typo, but that's okay. With possessives, it has an apostrophe in it. Man's, woman's, and plural possessives, which men's with an apostrophe S and woman's with an apostrophe S. So there's all different kinds of nouns. A verb, a verb expresses an action or helps make a statement. So with action verbs, they express um, mental or physical action. She spoke at the annual meeting, he thinks, about his wife. Linking verbs. Linking verbs actually just connect the subject with the predicate. He has been busy. Linking verbs. It's a, like a state of being. Taste, feel, sound, looks, grow, become, seem, remain, stay, appear, but they connect the subject with the predicate. Now, all of these slides within this slide share, I'm not going to touch on, but I'm going to do most of them. Every sentence must have a verb. A pronoun. A pronoun will take the place of a noun. <laughs> Here you have personal pronouns, and we did not get into indefinite or interrogative pronouns, but they're pretty neat. We know that they're pronouns, but we can touch on them, but we don't get into those as fifth grade. So we have personal pronouns like I, me, mine, you, your, but you also have the ones that we're familiar with. She, he, we, they. Um, so we have the singular, she, he, and then we have the plural pro pronouns that are the collective pronouns, which are like they and we. So indefinite, this is something that we did not touch on. Um, We're not going to touch on this fifth grade, but we can take a look at it. Anybody, anyone, each, either, none. Interrogative, those are the, those pronouns that ask questions. Who, whom, what, which, and demonstrative. This, that, these, and those. An adjective. An adjective modifies or describes a noun or a pronoun. It answers three things. Which, did you lose your office keys? Well, which keys? Your office keys. What kind? Is that your silk shirt? What kind of shirt? Your silk shirt. Or how many? I have five minutes left. How many minutes left? Five minutes. So adjectives usually answer those three questions. Which, what kind, or how many? An adverb. An adverb modifies or describes a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. It answers the questions, how? He talked quickly. How did he talk? Quickly. When? She left yesterday. Well, when did she leave? Yesterday. Where? They went there. Where did they go? There. And to what degree or how much? It's too humid. Too humid. And interrogative adverbs. These introduce questions. How did, how did you solve the problem? When is the, um, the next, when is the next trade show? How often you, do you revise the price list or where did you put the marketing report? 
Hmm, interesting. Preposition. Now, in my opinion, prepositions are one of the hardest parts of speech to kind of identify in a sentence, um, especially with fifth graders, um, because, I mean, we spiral with nouns and verbs, um, even with pronouns and adjectives, but prepositions are really tough. Um, a preposition introduces a noun or a pronoun or a phrase or a clause functioning as a noun. The word or word groups in the preposition introduces the object. So for, for me, it's easier to, to say that a preposition will kind of show like a relationship or a um, location. They received an email from Jenny telling about her trip to Bali. So they received an email from is the preposition from who? From Jenny, telling about what? About her trip to where? Valley. So do you see it shows a kind of a relationship within the noun in the sentence? So when you're looking at trying to find prepositions and um, the object that the preposition is, it's a little tough, but the more practice you get, you can it, it'll get a little bit, bit better. So you have the preposition and the object of the preposition is the noun you can press those leaves under glass. Under what? Glass is the object. You can also have more than one object within that preposition. Her email to Jack and Sophia. To who? The to is the preposition. Well, to who? Jack and Sophia. You can have more than one object. Okay? It improved during the last quarter. Now here it says objects can also have modifiers and what modifiers are, are just like describing words. So it improved during the last quarter. So my whole phrase is during the last quarter. My preposition here is during. My object is quarter, during quarter. Well, the and last, you know, are my modifiers or my describing words that's actually describing the word quarter or the object. So you can also have describing words or modifiers within that prepositional phrase. Some common prepositions, um, you will see is so many of them, but um, some common ones that we'll see a lot is like under, over, on, in, um, with, within, um, off, into. So it's so many com and from. It's so many common prepositions. So if you look and if you look for the preposition, and then you see where is that noun that comes after that preposition, it's easy to find that prepositional phrase. And a conjunction. A conjunction is a word that joins words or groups of words together. And to me, um, knowing that fanboys, the acronym of fanboys, it can help you to know what your common conjunctions are. And my favorite, interjections. Interjections are examples that express emotion. Goodness, what a lot of work you have. And there you'll see that goodness is my interjection or my word that shows emotion. Wow, you did a fantastic job. Wow is that word that shows the emotion. Now, students, teachers, any comments that or questions that you guys have there? Any questions? It's only 12 of us and half of us are teachers. Any questions? Everyone's so quiet. Jackson, do you have any questions over parts of speech? No, ma'am. No? See, this is something that we've done before. Heaven, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. All right. What about you, Zakaya? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to go over my anchor chart one more time, and then we'll go into our game. And that's just going to wrap up our lesson today. Okay, guys? Now, remember, our eight parts of speech, nouns, Person, place, thing, or idea. Adjectives, they describe the noun. Verbs, they show action or they're linking. Adverbs, 
They describe verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Pronouns, they rename the nouns. Prepositions, they usually link the nouns with other words in the sentence, but they show relationship or they show location. Conjunctions, they connect words in the sentence and interjections, they show emotion. So we usually have those eight common parts of speech. So we're ready for our game. Because you know, I love to play who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> Uh-oh, wrong share. Let's try it again. I have to find it. Mm. That's not it. Hold on, guys. Oh, I have to minimize that. That's why. All right, are we ready to play? Yes. All right, I'm gonna call on Miss Saunders first because you're the first face that I see. Miss Saunders. Now these are a little tricky. I started with two games, Miss Saunders. This one was a little more challenging. So this is the one that we're gonna play today. Okay, Amazon River. The Amazon River winds quite aimlessly through the thick Brazilian forest, the Amazon River. It winds quite aimlessly through the thick Brazilian forest. Now, Amazon River, is it a proper adjective, a proper noun, a verb, or a pronoun? Now, we did not talk about proper as far as nouns and adverb, I mean adjectives. When you think of proper, think of naming something specifically and it has to be capitalized. So Ms. Saunders, we know that Amazon River is capitalized. Mm -hmm. So it has to be either, which two? It's either a proper adjective or a proper noun, but we know that nouns are persons, places, things, or ideas. And so I know in my brain that a river is a thing. It's a place too, but it's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that Amazon River is B, a proper noun. A proper noun. Well, let's see. Good job. Good job. All right. Now, let's see who I can call on next. Sydney, are you ready? Yes. All right, Sid. Aimlessly. The Amazon River winds quite aimlessly through the thick Brazilian forest. I'm looking at the word aimlessly. Now remember, some words we said end in L-Y. So is it a noun, an adverb, an adjective, or a verb? We know that it's not one. Give me one to eliminate, Sydney. Um, a noun? It's not a noun, good job. So is it an adverb, a verb, or an adjective? Um, I think it's a adverb. Adverb, okay, because it's talking about, it's actually describing how the river winds. It's describing how it winds. Good job, Sydney. Oh, these are a little tough. So let's see. We're going to the next one. <laughs> Jackson, are you there? Yes. Come on, Jax. Displays. Woo. Okay, we're going to try to pronounce this. The Quetzal bird displays its vibrant blue feathers to its many jungle friends. Displays. Is it a noun? An adverb, an adjective, or a verb. So let, give me one to eliminate, Jax. A noun. It's not a noun. So the bird displays its feathers. So what do you think displays is, Jackson? It's saying what the bird is doing. Um, like adjective? 
Okay, well, is it describing the bird? Is it describing the bird? Do you think it's describing the bird? Yeah. Or it is saying, okay, it's not describing. What words are describing words, Jackson? A, um, an adverb. Okay, the adverb or adjectives. Which ones describe nouns? Uh, adverb. Describe nouns. Or oh, adjectives. Adjectives, very good. So is this describing the, the bird displays its vibrant? Is it describing that, that bird? Yes. You think that it's saying displays? Oh. Displays, Jackson, means um, shows. So it's like saying the bird shows. So displays is like a synonym for shows. So what do you think displays could be if it's the same thing as shows its feathers? If it's showing its feathers. So Jason, we know it's not a noun and we know it's not an adjective. So the question is, is it an adverb or is it a verb? A verb. Which one, Jackson? A verb. A verb. Why do you think it's a verb, Jackson? Because it's um, it's describing what um the bird is, what the bird is doing. Very good. So it's saying what the bird is doing. So let's see. Good job, Jackson. That one was tough. Good job. Okay, the next one. The jaguar slinks steeply in search of its prey, its prey. Hmm, Skylar, what do you think, Sky? Its prey, is it an adjective, a verb, a noun, or adverb? Noun. A noun, why? Because prey is like what the animal eats. Yay! Good job, Sky. All right, very. Oh, these are a little tough. Very oppressive humidity hangs in the air after the afternoon showers. Ooh, EJ, what do you think? Very. The very oppressive humidity. I'm actually describing the word oppressive, which Ad oppressive would be an adjective. So I'm describing that adjective. What is it? What do you think, um, EJ? I was going to say adjective. So do you think very is an adjective? So think about it. What am I describing words here? I have two. It can either be a what? Adverb. Or ad adjective. Now remember, adjectives describe nouns and adverbs describe verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Oh, yeah, adverb. Why adverb? Because if oppressive if a, is a pre, if oppressive is an adjective, then the adverb will have to um well kind of like well. Okay, so oppressive is an adjective and very is describing oppressive. So let's see. Good job. Ooh, we're at 2,000, guys. Do y'all want to keep going? All right. I saw some thumbs up. Okay, the word is branches. Zakaya, you ready? The Brazilian trees spread their branches high and wide in a vast protective canopy. What do you think branches would be? They spread their branches. What do you think, Zakaya? Adverb, noun, verb, or adjective? Spread their branches. 
What do you think a branch is, Zakaya? Zakaya. What do you think? Okay, well, are they it are the branches? Is it describing anything? Yes. Zakaya? Is it describing anything? Yes. The branches? The Brazilian trees spread their branches. No. No. So we can eliminate adverb and adjective. So it's either a noun or a verb. What do you think, Zakaya? A noun. A noun. Good job, Zakaya. All right, let's see who wants to go next. Mm, it's not very many. Let's see, Michaela. Are you ready, Michaela? All right. Now, this one is a little tricky, Michaela, but you can do it. Brilliantly, blue butterflies flutter aimlessly through the lush tropical foliage. Brilliantly blue butterflies. Now, Michaela, we didn't look at articles. Articles are like A, um, and so we didn't look at articles. So we know it's not articles. So we're gonna eliminate that one, okay? Give me another one I can eliminate. Michaela, what do you think? Is it a verb? Is it showing action? Like run, jump, do you think it's a verb? Yes. Okay, so do you think it's showing an action? Brilliantly blue butterflies. The word flutter is telling me what they're doing. So do you think that brilliantly is a verb, Michaela? Let me see her face, I need to see her face. Where are you, Kayla? Okay, now we know it's not a verb, okay? So it's a little tricky. It's between an adverb and an adjective. Okay, so would you like to get a hint, Michaela? Okay, the answer is not D. We knew that though, didn't we? Do you want another hint, Michaela? Or would you like to phone a friend? Phone a friend. Okay, let's see. What friend would you like to phone, Michaela? It's a lot of them on here. Who would you like to ask to help you? Any, you can name a teacher too if you like, Michaela, because this one is tricky. I think I would pick Miss Saunders. Miss <laughs> Saunders! Thanks, Michaela! <laughs> Stop laughing at me, Miss Dowdy. Dow uh, brilliantly blue flower, uh, butterflies. Ooh. You know, you know I need to talk myself through this one just like they do on the real show because brilliantly would be an adverb, mm -hmm. but they're talking about blue butterflies. I'm going to say an adjective because it's describing the butterflies. Okay. Do you think so, Michaela? You have to agree or disagree with me. Say something, use words. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I know, I don't know whether it's an adverb or an adjective, Miss uh, Saunders. That's I know, question. well, I was thinking adverb because brilliantly, mm -hmm. but then it said blue butterflies. So that makes me think of, that it's an adjective, brilliantly see, blue. I, I was thinking adverb because brilliantly could be right. describing the word blue. And if blue is an adjective, we know adverbs describe adjectives. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I what don't do you mess it up. I don't know, but hey, let's and it's okay. Another, let's call another friend. Okay. So who would you like to call, Miss Saunders? Um, is Miss Anderson on? Is she on here today? Or did she leave? Miss Houseworth. What do you think, Miss Houseworth? 
Yeah, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. I um, was trying to see if, like you all said, brilliantly is also describing blue. Mm -hmm. blue, is the, blue is an adjective. Mm -hmm. Brilliantly right now is um, an adverb, right? Well, you know, I know adverbs in an L-Y, mm -hmm. majority of the time. However, um, let me just give me one more second. Yeah, I'm being honest. This one is tricky. I don't know. I mean, I, it could be either one, but I'm still thinking adjective, but I don't know. We'll see. And aimlessly is right now an adverb in there, mm -hmm. um, but brilliantly. Let's go, I, I guess, I would prefer to go with adjective more so than adverb. Okay. I say let's go with it because I don't know either. Oh, um, no. It was, oh, no. We it messed up. That's okay. That's okay. Now, you said earlier that brilliantly could is also um, describing the adjective. So Yeah, but it also, that, because I think that they're saying that brilliantly is describing blue, which blue is an adjective here because it's describing the butterflies. But I mean, I didn't know because it, my first instinct as well was adjective. So we know it was between adverb and adjective. So, oh no. Oh, that's okay. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We had to go. Yeah, and Miss Houseworth, yours keeps freezing up too. So. Yeah, I know that's okay. So what I'm going to do, you will notice on our page, there will be on our Google site, you're going to see that same game, which rags to riches. And I had another one, guys, and it was so easy. The sentences had like four and five words in it. And I was like, oh my God, the kids will get this. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so, but they're going to be on our site. Mm -hmm. So we're going to review one more time the eight parts of speech, and then we'll be done. We know nouns, name person, places, or things. Adjectives actually describe nouns. Verbs, they show action, but they also can be linking, connecting the subject and the predicate. Adverbs, we know, describe verbs. Adjectives are adverbs, and they usually end in L-Y. Pronouns, they rename the nouns. Preposition, they link the noun with some other part of the sentence, and they usually just show relationship or loca location within the sentence. Conjunctions, they connect words in the sentence. And think of fanboys with conjunctions and interjections. They show emotion or strong feeling. Okay. Um, 